In this lesson, I'm going to start blocking out my silhouette and primary forms in ZBrush. So to do that, I'm going to be taking the real world scale markers to ZBrush. So I put the real world scale markers on the layer. I'm going to take each of them and export them as one OBJ and also the bun. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to grab the whole real world scale marker group and move it so her head is a little bit more centered. I'm going to grab all three real world scale markers. Actually, before I do that, I noticed that my burger is not sitting directly on the floor. So I'm going to grab it and make sure I move it up so it's direct, it's sitting directly on the floor. That might require some minor camera adjustments or not, but this is fine. So I'm going to grab the three real world scale markers. I'm going to grab the bottom bun to help me estimate the size of the bun I'm about to create. And then I'm going to grab the floor and export them as an OBJ. And I usually have a folder called Maya to ZBrush. I'm going to start over there, OBJ Maya to ZBrush, and I'm going to export it as an object format and call it real world scale markers. And now it's time to move to ZBrush so I can get them imported into my ZBrush scene. Okay, so we're in ZBrush. I'm going to import them, run import, and there they are. It's important to know that I have turned ZBrush the other way around. When you import these items from Maya, they're going to come in upside down. ZBrush and Maya are not synced. So everything that's upright in Maya is upside down in ZBrush, but I don't need any of this stuff to be upright in ZBrush. I care more that it's upright in the program I'm going to be rendering in. One thing that might produce some issues is if you try to do any simulation of Z cloth in ZBrush, because you're upside down, you either have to now set your gravity to a negative number, or you can just flip your entire model upside back upright in ZBrush, run your simulation and then flip it back around. So those are the only problems you'll run into by having your model upside down in ZBrush. But for this, we're fine. I might be doing some Z cloth simulations. I'm not quite sure, but if I do, we'll flip it upside down. Two changes I make in my viewport. I'm on a 1920 by 1080 canvas. This allows me to see my sculpting in a very good fidelity. And I also go to document and I crank down the range because usually in default ZBrush, it has like a black gradient that tapers to a gray. I don't like that. So I go, I want a flat color. So I go to range and I crank it. Down. Okay. So it looks like we're ready to get started blocking. I'm going to grab this mesh and I'm going to go to display properties. And because when I turn it upside down, the it's not displaying double sided meshes. So you have to tell it to do that by clicking double here, and then it will make sure it shows the inside of your mesh. I have it stored on the shelf. So if you ever see me use it again, I'll be using it on the, on the interface here. I made a master reference sheet with the main reference and some more reference to assist me in completing this project. So this is our main one. This is the main reference over here. This is the backside. In the first lesson, I had a long discussion about how I was going to pull detail from this assisting reference. So if you want to know how I'm going to be pulling information from these two, check out the first lesson. But I added some more, a whole bunch of other cheeseburgers with unique detail that is going to help. I have some patties over here, just so I have a full reference to actually craft a patty. And this one is ones with striations from being on a grill. I don't think that's what we're going with, but it's good to have it there. It does have some important information. And then I have pickles because I'm going to have to do two pickles uh, from here, from the main reference. So I have pickles to help me. From here, one, uh, these two, I really like the information over here on the buns, this really creased information. I'm going to put it on the back side. I want the front side to be clean, but on the back where it's angled down, I'm going to use information from these buns. These other ones are just to help me get some more shots of meat and uh, cheese uh, to invent cheese for the back. And I think this one, this particular one here, I like the information on the bottom bun. 
So if this is not enough, this is the main information I'm going to be using for the bottom bun, the other side of the bottom bun, because it matches very closely to what we have in our reference. And if I need any more information for additional views, I will count on this one right here to get some of this nice collapsed bread detail to get the finished piece done. And one thing I'm also realizing that I did not take note of is that it looks like there's two slices of this cheese under the spicy sauce. So I'll be draping two slices of cheese on top of this bun. And also here I have the singed, if you look at the top bun, it's singed all the way around. So I just wanted some additional information to guide me to get that singe. This one is a little bit more burnt, but I get the idea. So it's that's what purpose it's going to serve. Okay, so this is going to be the approach. I'm going to block out the bottom bun first, then get the two patties, then get the top bun and the sliced pickles underneath it. And after those have been blocked out fairly well, I'll start draping the cheese and the sauces onto their respective meshes. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna start by going to Polyframe to watch these and go auto group. So each of these get their own group, just so I could do a group split. Always. I just split them into their individual pieces. And these are nails from the fingers. I don't really need them. Just start deleting. Okay. Floor, plate, very good. Okay. I'm going to append a cylinder. I'm going to create the first bun with a cylinder. Scale it down. Not with that. That's the transpose cloth brush. Looking for the regular transpose brush. So it's about the size of the old bun. Okay. All right. I'm going to solo it. And now I'm going to Dynamesh it. Dynamesh can be found in. By the way, this auto group that I just used, it's under the poly group menu over here. It's auto group. Dynamesh is under the geometry tab. It's in here. I just moved most of its settings down here. So I'm just going to do a simple Dynamesh at I think 40 is usually where I start. Nope, that's not enough. That's not enough either. How about that? That should be fine. I'm gonna keep it as low res as possible so that I don't be, I don't get tempted to do any detailing. So for now, it's just trying to capture the silhouettes. Actually, this might have been a little bit too low. We'll do about try to match that. That should be good. With a little bit of smoothing. I could do a general. Uh, automatic smooth in the deformation menu but in the the objective is to at this stage get as much irregularity as possible we're going to be banging this up so that it looks really close to what the reference is and you want as much irregularity as possible so doing the smooth manually is good so I'm going to activate symmetry and I'm actually going to go to the symmetry menu because I want to activate radial symmetry It's not the axis I want. I'm going to go to transform and I'm looking for Y is radial symmetry. Okay, it looks like I'm going to move this thing away from the center. Turn on local symmetry. I have to turn on local symmetry because it looks like I moved this thing is away from the center, which is weird to me because. It's minus center. Anyway, no big deal. I might end up moving it back, but uh, I'll turn on local symmetry so that it looks for the symmetry of the mesh I'm trying to sculpt. And the only brushes I'm going to be using right now are Trim Dynamic and the Move tool. 
I'm gonna start doing some trimming at the edge here to get something that's close to the bun in our reference. This might be a good start. I'm gonna bang up some of these edges too so we can lose some of the faceting. spirit of not uh, with the same logic I said prior where I was like you don't want too much of a mechanical feel to it so this is a good time to turn off the symmetry so I could sort of bang them up bang up this piece of bread uh, so it has different detail all around at this very early stage I, I want that I want a lot of irregularity let's increase brush intensity This will be shaped. I just want some initial noisy surface. Manually. Okay. I'm gonna to go to the top view. I'm gonna turn, make sure perspective is off. I'm gonna turn symmetry back on. I just want to pull and get the move tool and pull like the out outskirts out a bit. The top half of the bun out so we get the proper tapering that we need move it yet still and that's good but it looks like now I have to move this out a little bit just because I know I'm going to need to I'm going to also start making it a little irregular like this but ultimately I will be looking at my reference to figure out what's going to happen to those parts and then also because I know that the burger the patties are going to come and weigh heavily on this center part I'm going to move it down to express the weight of the patty that's going to come in here. It's gonna be a really irregular surface. That too might change. Depending on what inside the end. Okay, so this is somewhat of a good starting point. I do feel like the bun in the reference is just a little shorter so I'm going to go in short and I want to establish the front I want to make sure I'm looking at the front so that I can prepare for this little indent that's on the side over here there's like this indent that I'm gonna use a sort of like a screen mark make sure I keep track of it because the bun is caved in over there. All right, let me group the the real world scale markers just so I can hide it a lot easier. I'll just add all that. Move on to adding the first bun. So I'm going to append another cylinder. Zoom out. Scale it down. I'm going to scale down this to get that patty feel. Scale it down. This is the first patty. I'm going to use the same. First, actually, for this one, I'm going to first divide it a few times and I'll delete lower. Delete lower is under the geometry tab. So I'll delete lower subdivisions. And now I'm going to just like I did before, hack away at this thing with the trim dynamic brush. 
make sure our radial symmetry is on. Just hack away at it. That's the wrong symmetry. I want radial symmetry in the y axis. I'll hack away at it. So a little bit. Just gonna get an initial something to start away. Get started with. That should be good. I'm going to start making some moves with symmetry off. This part is going to be this really squashed part and the bread seems to be really collapsed there. So I'm going to try to start hinting at that. It's completely damaged here and the patty is going to you almost flush with the bread and look, looks like there's going to be a lot of sauce here too. I'll get to that. The central part of the patty appears to have a lot more weighting. So I'm going to kind of move a little bit down. Have some irregularity. I'm also put the weight here. And I feel like I'm going to activate symmetry again with the transform tool and do a little bit more hacking away at the top. Symmetry and then try to do one by one. And let me dynamite this piece. That's not enough. Okay. Now I'm going to do it manually just again and don't want any mechanical operations to make it look all the same. At the very beginning, you want to be using like isolating sculpt data to specific areas. You sort of have like an organic feel to it, but no mechanical. It doesn't have anything about it that feels mechanical. I'm gonna start shaping this patty to match the bun a little bit. And all the sauce you're seeing, I'm not gonna deal with it now at all. I just wanna get the, like I said, first the buns, patties, and the pickles. And then we'll be, we'll have a good starting point. Do a little bit more moving. It feels like I missed out on something. It feels like there's more weight on the outskirts insides i find that that is not the case but ultimately it's what looks as close to the reference as possible so for now i'm going to leave it as is i'm going to duplicate that and keep shaping this stuff this patty looks a lot weightier looks taller and that might be because this one is so most of it is sunken into the bread into the central part of the bread and it might be cutting off the height a bit but for now i'm going to go with this like heavy look so yet again what i'm seeing is on this side the patty is de definitely girthier and it's impacted this patty this patty has to move up a little bit to accommodate this one take this a little bit higher because I know that the cheese is gonna come over there very soon another thing I'm seeing is that this guy is a lot looking at it from the front okay, I'm gonna make sure this guy is a little higher I'm intentionally again only using the move brush at this stage because I want to force myself to not try to hack in any details at this stage, just try as best as possible to capture a silhouette. I'm initially starting to capture the silhouette of the front. Eventually we'll move to the back and use the other reference to capture 
a silhouette of the back or do some invention there. I'm going to do something very important towards the end before we close the lesson on this blocking. I still feel like this should be a little taller. I'm going to center the pivot and then reset it so it's just a little bit taller. So the cheese is going to come over here. All right. Let me move on to the top one. I'm going to append another cylinder. Zoom out. Scale it down. Move it. And this one's a lot thinner. I'm going to give it the DynaMesh. Actually, let me, yeah, let me just do the DynaMesh first. DynaMesh. I don't want to lose the lips the sharpness of the lips this early forced me to have to redo them so I don't like to go with too low uh, of a dynamesh I might end up sharpening them manually which is which is fine I can sharp, I'll sharpen them manually when we get there all right so I'm going to get the trim dynamic brush again activate symmetry to go to transform radio I'm sure I have radio but again it's the wrong axis so I want the Y axis shave and this one has a really tapered feel to it so it's like a half cylinder that's really tapered so I'm gonna make sure I get that tapering And as I said, I'll be using this one for the back. So I'll have to make sure that I'm also accommodating this shape in the back, but this shape in the forward. It'll be interesting to figure out how that's going to work out. Um, let me show the way. And also for this one, I'm going to go solo, go underneath it with the radial still on. I'm going to start pulling out uh, the edges, the lips, so we get a proper tapering that looks very much like the reference. And I think that's pretty close. Just a little bit more. Okay, this is a good time to stop using symmetry and rotate it. Start rotating it up. So let's rotate it a bit this way. Let's rotate it a bit that way. Okay, so for that to work, I'm starting to see what's gonna have to happen to the bun in the back. It's really gonna have to be lower. So this is our front. It does have a little bit of a, I might underemphasize the tilt. Actually, no, I think I'm fine with going with the tilt in the reference and try to capture that about that much but that does mean that in the back here let's make sure the meat comes down which is fine because our back reference shows the meat down about right I have lost a certain this thing might be a little bit too big go to scale and bring down this patty a bit sorry this bun so the bun I think is tall enough but as I said before for the back I might need to fluff it up a little bit to be able to do what I'm seeing in the reference here so I'm going to start uh, giving it a little bit more prominence in the back because the back reference will demand that. Look at it. That looks about as fluffy as the back. Okay. As long as it doesn't impact the front. It's not a big deal because the front reference doesn't give us some that much information about how it's going to look like as you go to the top. So you can have this bit of an irregular feel to it. Mm, I think it'll work. Now 
when I look at this, what I'm using for the secondary reference, I'm really going to count on it to get interesting angles. Like this front part here is cool. I'm, I'm trusting the design of the front part to do what it's supposed to do to give us a cool design, which even with that, I feel like you def I definitely want, don't want this straight result. So I'm going to try to see do what I'm seeing in the reference, which is just a little bit of a tilt, an angle in this part where the bun comes down like this. So I want that angle. In the back, it's even more aggressive. So I'm going to make sure this patty is staying close. And if we go to the back, Based on the rest reference I'm using for the back, I'm really going to have to really push that. So what I'm going to do is mask the bottom because I don't want to move the bottom so much and then I'm going to blur it. I don't want the bottom to move and then I'm going to try to simulate that angle that I'm getting in the back. When it comes to the back, it's going to be a lot more difficult because it's going to be a lot of invention. So I have to really think about how to make it work. This come down a bit. One thing I always want to make sure you're able to do with this is cell weight. So it comes in the way of uh, showing forceful line. And sometimes it means just uh, picking good angles, and sometimes it means just making sure things are flush. Looks like this bun you could definitely use that angle. It's really nice, good design to have these varied angles working against each other. And for the back, this angle is pretty good. Definitely gonna have to move this up to accommodate the cheese. Let me bring this down a little bit. Okay, so that's an initial of the back. I'm gonna try to see if I'm gonna benefit from having this sit like that. Get a little bit of a dip in the central part. Make sure a better shape. And I'll have the opportunity to change this many times, but it's good to start thinking about it now. Move this back a bit. It does have to look like the bun was cut in half, and this top one looks a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna have to scale it up. Let me put in two cylinders to represent the pickles. Uh, fine. Okay. That's about good. And I'm definitely going to have to. some sauce coming here but one thing I'm seeing for sure is that I do need to make sure that this is coming that is tapering down it looks very hilly central part is higher and this is kind of tapering down like so I'll get the cheese and the sauce in there shortly but is a lot wider, a lot flatter, and it's definitely at an angle. Like this. Okay, 
So we have one. And I'm gonna duplicate. And this one looks a little bit smaller and taller. Definitely looks a lot taller. It looks like the tip of the cucumber. And this one looks like the more central part. Or this one just closer to the tip, but it's not angled. Feels straight. When I get the cheese and the sauce in there, I, might have to, I will have to move them up. And one thing with these buns, like I said, you always want to make sure that the inside has like this irregularity as far as the, it gives it a more natural feel. It's never going to be straight. Let's see what we have. So, something about this bun is really messing with me. From the front view, it feels like I don't want to make it smaller, but I do want there's a certain tapering that I'm missing, and I might have gone too tall with this patty. I'm going to scale it down. It is very good to be able to use your eye to gauge this stuff and, and, and sort of like train your eye to be able to capture silhouettes just by looking at the reference and going back and forth. So I don't really do any of that tracing stuff or superimposing your model and trying to shape it to look exactly like what you're seeing in your reference. I'd rather use my eye to gauge and it'll train you and you'll get really good at modeling if you can trust your eye to gauge the correct volumes and proportions and stuff like that build your confidence in sculpting so i feel like this is definitely looks like it's deeper in there i'm gonna move it back a little bit more this has also a shelf-like feel right here. feels like this is more like a plain break here and it'll also help continue to make it more interesting. You have a lot more irregular shapes rather than the straight feel. I'm gonna zoom in to the front. I feel like I'm also seeing like a, a dip, a very aggressive dip here. It's like, makes it like a swooping shape from here and to accommodate it further. I'm gonna move this down. I think it's time to get some of the, it's time to get the key shapes in there to help me scale this up. I think it's a lot larger. Keep changing until I get it right. Uh, okay, now I see there's an issue with this. I might need to move down and be more open so we can see the bottom part of it. And okay, I might see what I'm doing wrong. It's not that it's smaller, it's just that it's hanging. It's offset to the side a lot more. So we're seeing a lot more of the side. And also, I need to accommodate. So I need to make sure that this part of the burger is really being pushed up by the bottom one. Once again, only move brush here. Only move brush, trim dynamic. I'm not doing no damn standard, nothing. It's all shaping to see what the silhouette looks like. So another trick that you can also use to make sure to check the silhouette is to go to this material. It's a flat color like this. And then if you go all the way black, actually no, stick with white. And then you can start tumbling to see what silhouette is looking like. I can see now that I may have to from the front view definitely gotta move this. The cheese needs to come in and I see that this is a lot shorter than it's supposed to be. So I might have made the outskirts a little bit too short. And then here it's actually there is like a whole 
sort of clean break. I'm gonna have to be accommodating. It's like a stepped effect. Yeah. And then, it's like the stepped effect. And it goes into the bun. So there's no this material back, see what's happening. Not too far. Okay, to accommodate that. Nope, didn't go too far, it's fine. So this is the front. And this is like a little inyard in there. This is a lot flatter. Okay, and then this, a lot thinner. Back here is definitely out a lot more. Make sure it looks balanced and doesn't look like it's gonna tip over. And that stepped effect is in fact also here, so I'm gonna move this in. You see more of the bun. And the more I keep looking at it, the more I feel like the bun is a lot lower top bun is a lot lower than I thought. I can bring it down some more. Okay. This cheese in the back, this top bun, is going to also be smaller here, so the from the back. Even though it doesn't feel like you have enough enough geometry to work if it's fine, just keep moving things around and make sure that this blocky version of it looks as close as possible to the final reference as possible. So I'm looking at it. Let me take a quick inspection to make sure. Okay, so this top bun here, I did kind of go a little too crazy with moving that back around so I want to make sure I do have a nice shape from the front view. Okay. Yeah, this is a good starting point the back. Let me see what the back looks like. Okay, this one we're freestyling so there's no crutch reference so here it's all about using what I understand about design to get some nice angles, some nice like zigzag shapes, some countering angles. This little offset really, I don't like it at all. Well, I understand I want to keep it for the front because I want to match the reference as close as possible. When we get to the back. I just want to make sure it doesn't look like it's going to fall off. So I'm going to try to see if I can extend it just a little bit more here. And get like a nice back. And quite possibly also extend like the bottom bun a little bit this way. And then try to get something more balanced. but at least make the bun look like it was the top bun look like it was severed from the top bottom one you know I don't want it to look too small but still sort of maintain somewhat of a round shape not too round you know, these things are not perfect 
by any measure. It's going to be very uneven. You don't want a perfect circle either side. Okay. I think this is a good stopping point. I'm going to bring in the cheese and then I'm going to do a very important thing to this patty, which is our focal point. I'm going to talk about something. Let's move on to putting in the cheese and the sauce. Okay, before I get in the cheese, I'm going to get that split in the back that I'm getting from this reference, this assisting reference. That was the first plan. This was the first assisting reference I was going to use for the back. And it was because of that top patty and the split in it, I really liked it. So to do that first, I'm going to take this bun and move it a little bit more forward and just to accommodate this bun. This is a lot of this is all going to be most of it is going to be invention as long as I get the split in I'm cool. And also with this I realize I do need that Yeah, the back could use a little bit of movement. Yeah. And I do need this bottom half a little bit solar. And I want the bottom half to kind of come out a little bit more so that it tapers. Take the trim dynamic brush and shave away to get more of a slope so that I can start working on this split. Just give it some breathing room. So this split is just a dig. It looks like a, a valley where a water flow, a waterfall sort of is coming through. It's really cool. I really like the way it looks. Again, I'm using only the move tool and this is on purpose. I just don't want to end up doing any type of sculpting, real sculpting now. It's all shaping to get big, to get the big shapes, the big noticeable shapes. in the first lesson the cheese is not going to be anywhere near what we're seeing on this reference on the screen the first reference has established that the cheese up top is not that melted so I'm going to have to extend it to the back like that okay I think this is good this has a very shelfy feel to it okay so that's a good starting point for a split get this bun to just go a little higher okay so all right so let me start blocking in the cheese I'll start with the top one as I mentioned the top one it feels like it's two slices laid out so what I'm going to do is solo it go to my mass tool I'm gonna choose a block for my alpha and make sure I at least hint at where I need the corner to be. Okay. All right, so at least I, I know the corner is gonna be right there, coming down to about there. And then this second one is going to be here. Okay, so I'm gonna sew this. And imagine that this was cheese laid out Gonna be very rough. I should have added more subdivisions, but I think this is fine. So it's gonna be two pieces of cheese, two slices of cheese, sort of just overlapping each other. So it should do something like this. 
no, extrude them as one mesh. So the other one would extend maybe here like so. Just a simple blocked out piece that we can move around and see how it contributes. We go extract and I just want to, I don't want it to extract in both directions so I'm going to turn off double and see what I get. That is obviously too big so I'm going to go with 1.002. So this is the beginnings of our cheese up top. We do a little bit of straightening. Let's do this part you can see because it's covered by the sauce which we're about to add shortly. So I'm gonna shape this so that it looks like a regular cheese slice. Really what you what I have done is this is what we'd have I'm just it's just sort of like one cheese slice sitting on top of another. Alright, let's see what I just wanted to show that. Just a straight, a few straight edges. Okay. So there's your sort of two slices of cheese, one sitting on top of the other. Inflation of this. I'll take the inflate, set it to one. Yeah, okay. Now I'm going to extract the sauce. I want this. Let me sew this. It's a bit rounder. More crescent shapes. Have to move it on top of the cheese. I'm assuming it was spread all over. Pull it as needed. So I'm going to go to the subtool menu and do another extract, but this is going to be a lot thicker than that, so I'm going to go 0 0.009. Extract, start off really thick, accept that, and Can do like a general deformation smooth. I'm gonna smooth it out. And do a little bit of an inflation. turn on back face mask. This allows me to pull on this piece without uh, impacting the other side. So if we go solo, should be able to just move this part and fluff it up and it will not pull the other side. I think it's in the No, I think it's under the brush menu. If you go to the brush menu and go to auto masking sub palette, it's right there, back face mask. So you can access it there under the brush menu. All right, let me continue pulling this out. Okay, that's a lot. 
definitely too much. Okay, I'm going to turn it off now so I can move this thing a little bit more comfortably. Okay, so the sauce is about that high. I don't want it to overwhelm the pickles. And it does feel like I have made a mistake with the height of this pickle. But this is why everything has to come in now. All the blocking has to come in because you get to see what's wrong. So this pickle does go up and it feels like this bread is uh, it's pushing the bread up so that we can see the whole pickle. So let me push the bread in. But I definitely have this a little too high. Oh, really high. So only the edge that looks to have like this mound, this ribbing. And then there's this S shape between that marries both pickles together. And I wanna make sure I get that. And after that, in front is like this. Well, it's not an S shape, it's a swooping, it feels like a swooping shape. It's kind of dip. All right, then I have this appears to be long, it's covering the majority of the cheese. Eventually, when these meshes are polished, they're going to be welded together. As I mentioned in lesson one, a lot of these meshes are going to be welded together to sell uh, the realism of this piece at render time. A couple of lessons is what we're going to be doing, just shaping, trying to capture all these little shapes that we're seeing and we'll stay here as long as possible to make sure that we're looking at an almost exact replica of our reference in a very blocky fashion. going to figure out how this cheese and the sauce is going to come through later. For now, I'll just make sure that, okay, that seems to be the sauce. I'll, just, I'll figure it out later. Right now, I just want to make sure it's not penetrating the back. We'll figure out how it's going to pour down here. Yeah, we'll figure out this side too. Really gonna dive into the primary shapes in the next lesson. Here is really mostly about silhouette and the cool trick that I did say I was going to talk about. Alright, so now let me get the cheese at the bottom. That one is a lot more it's a lot more detailed. I'm going to duplicate this mesh, subdivide it twice just so I can get a little bit more resolution, delete lower, to pull out the second cheese. So I'm gonna temporarily hide this original, go to solo, and start pulling out. All right, so I'm gonna pull, start hinting at what I believe to be seen, of the cheese at the bottom. Get to this little side here. It's more so on the top. And when we move over to the back, there's a lot of it, and I think I'll just get a shape out first, and I'll decide how I'm going to shape it. 
general shape. Pull it down as I see fit. So I'm going to extract at, again, I don't want double, I just want it to pull up. So I'll uncheck double and go 0 0.009 and extract. That's fine. Now I'm going to hide this high res mesh. I don't really need it. I just wanted to get something out. Let me start smoothing this. This front here, this is a very unique shape. Make sure I capture that. Into some of these shapes. Yeah. There's some preparation. Again, nothing but move brush. It just stops you from doing any type of work at this stage. We don't want to do any work until the silhouette is good. I'll go through and try to use the trim dynamic to finesse this a little bit. Just half away at one of these. A little swollen. I'll deal with them better later. look at the edges where it's supposed to be the peak of the leaking cheese it's not going to be so puffy okay so uh, this front appears to be on its way Stick here because seeing more bun than cheese, and on the other side, I think we're fine. Just around here, cheese is not visible. Let me make sure it's in there. for the back I'm going to try to go initially for what is right there on that second assisting reference later if I don't like it 
just pour onto the bread. And there's like this part. More silhouette. Try to get this little mound. And this is an interesting shape. Let me start blocking it out now. definitely protruding. I think it might be a good thing to have. It breaks up the detail a bit instead of just having all cheese pouring. So the bun is sort of protruding as long as it doesn't impact the front, the visual from the front. I want to make sure from the front and get exactly what we have in our reference. So if I look at it, yeah, we're fine. So it's pretty much my invent territory so i definitely will be using this protruding uh, patty look and also from the back it isn't so it is a head it protrudes farther than the bread. I guess this is a good place to also add another some bit of irregularity to the back. To so I'll find something to do with this indented detail. But yeah. Okay. That also feels like this bread is comp it's not anywhere near as low as it should be. I'm gonna mask the bottom again. Let me get rid of this and mask the bottom and blur. And then really, this is almost completely collapsed. And that will also justify that uh, collapse that is going to happen in the back to make the bread fold into itself and produce that line. It's like you really need to show that it's collapsing under the weight of everything on top of it. So once I do that, I can pull this down further. It really adds a certain asymmetrical feel to the back view, and that's good. tempted to grab the clay build up and start trying to move it but we're not doing that so it's important to just limit yourself with it's just one thing I like to do just limit myself with this brushes so that I don't get too far ahead of myself back in the old day when you sculpt in ZBrush you go with subdivision levels and that's what would usually stop you from trying to put in too much detail and nowadays we have so many tools available to us we can still use the old subdivision levels approach but there's too many tools like dynamesh and really cool things that let you flesh out your your shapes and they give you a lot of geometry uh, and if you're uh, not you don't find a way to contain yourself you know, you'll not be able to utilize the benefits of the old school moving up in subdivision levels like slowly detailing from subdivision level one to whatever 
higher subdivision level you want. Okay, the sauce on the bun, I'm gonna do that a lot later. Once we've collapsed the bread, then I'll start putting that in. But for now, I'm gonna leave that out. Because this top patty is the focal point of this model, and also the piece that will require the most sculpt detail, I'm going to split it into several pieces, specifically at the extremities. This will give each piece more polygons at subdivision time. This means I will be able to pump more high fidelity or high frequency sculpt data onto each piece. It will also allow me to have enough polygons to pull out protruding shapes. Another benefit of splitting them up is that at the parts where each piece meets, I will get better occlusion results at render time. I'm also going to split the back the same way. As I've mentioned, the cheese will not be dripping over it as shown in the reference. So a lot of the meat detail has to be sculpted there. This lesson is a little over an hour, so I'm going to end it here and start the next lesson with the splitting of the top patty. Then I'll focus my attention on blocking out the primary forms while keeping track of the silhouette. Because the silhouette still needs a lot of work, especially from the side views. I didn't spend any time on the silhouette of the sides at all.